Gay Christian Center. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where Jesus Christ is Lord. Where the Holy Spirit is in control, all nine gifts of the Spirit flow. Welcome to New Day, where you can have a new day to live life God's way. Amen? Amen. All the people God said, Amen. Amen. And if you're lost, you can be saved today. If you're sick or afflicted in your body, this can be your day for a miracle, for healing. If you need restoration in areas of your life, God can do that right now. Wherever you're at, watching this service, in faith, releasing your faith, believing that God loves you, right where you're at, you can have a miracle, a complete life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had at Christ Mass to celebrate the birth of our King, our Lord, and our Savior. We're so grateful, Father. We're so grateful for Jesus. We're so grateful for the loved ones that you've allowed our lives to to be mingled with. We're so grateful for the great grace calling of your purpose in each and every one of our lives. And Father God, we unwrapped presents and we gave praise to you and thanks to Jesus for what was given to us. First, by him in our new birth and salvation. And then, through people that you blessed into our lives. Now, Father God, as we come before you after the Christ Mass celebration. Let us celebrate a new purpose in our lives, a new purpose of God in our lives, a new purpose for your will in our lives. Let us unwrap a higher level of your presence in our lives, that we might become a gift to those around us and those that we meet no matter where they're at, no matter what's going on in their lives, let Jesus come forth out of us and save and heal and transform in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we get into your word, we purpose, we don't hope, we purpose, we will not leave this church the same way we came. Come on. We will be empowered, we will be increased, we will be strengthened, we will be changed by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Jesus. And all the people that agree said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to teach very long, but I'm going to speak what the Spirit of God laid on my heart. And we are going to look, I think I'm going to call this message an invitation for fools. An invitation for fools. I don't want to speak down to anybody. I don't want. I don't want to make anybody feel ridiculed or belittled. But I do want to challenge everyone here and everybody all over the internet that will hear this message. I challenge you, once and for all, to live for the greater, higher calling of God in our lives. Amen. 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 To live for the things that Jesus Christ died for. There's that saying that says, are you living for what you're living for? Are they worth what Christ died for? Amen. And it's many, many times, I think, for the people you run into that name the name of Christ, that you find out at work are Christians, that you run into in the business places of the world that are that somehow comes out that they're Christians. How many, how many times I've come across people at work that I've been around them for years, and they knew I was a Christian, but I didn't know they were Christians. That's the first evidence when, when the manifest reality of Jesus Christ is not evident in our day-to-day -day lives. It's the first evidence that we're living for the wrong things. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. When somebody has to seek out and dig out and find out and be surprised that you were a Christian all this time, it's first evidence that you've been living for protecting things that aren't worth Christ dying for. Amen. Your priorities have been wrong. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. What, was this, what was this ministry of Jesus all about? What, well, he came to save people. Well, that, that's, that's intermingled in part of it. Amen? amen? 
Look with me at 1 John chapter 3. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 3. And the last part of verse 8 says this. For the Son of God, say Jesus. Jesus. The Son of God. The Son of God was manifested in the humanity. I put that part in. That he might destroy the works of the devil. That tells you right there why Jesus came. Come on. Father, in that coming, in that purpose of God, in him leaving the throne at the right hand of God and coming to earth, this whole reason the Son of God was manifested was to destroy all, all the works that the devil had done. Amen? Amen? For the Son of God was manifested. He came into manifestation that he might destroy the works of of the devil. Amen. Now I want to point out something right there, right off the bat. He did not say get along with. It does not say agree with. It didn't say harmonize with. It didn't say be accepted by. It said destroy the works of the devil. Amen. What was Jesus all about? Tearing the shreds everything the kingdom of darkness had, dis had, had designed and built and, and structured on earth. Amen. Every bit of it. What are you here for? To destroy you. What are you here for? To destroy that. What are you here for? To tear that down. Amen. This whole mentality of just get along and, and don't offend people and, and just and just be a nice person and, and don't ruffle feathers and don't make people offended. That's not gospel, folks. Amen. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, I did not come to give you peace. I came to bring a sword. To send a mother against her daughter. To send a father against his son. A husband against his wife. Those that are with me are with me. And those that aren't for me are against me. There is no politically correct happy middle ground. Amen. Come on. He was anointed to destroy and wipe out everything Satan had begun to build. Amen. Hallelujah. You might settle it in your mind right now. If it's not something God's building, it's the adversary. Amen. You're either in faith or you're in doubt and unbelief. There's no in-between. In Come on. You're either in love or you're in hate. There's no in-between. Hello. Come on, brother. You're either walking with God or you're not walking with God. There is no in-between. Amen. Amen. Jesus said that. He said, you're either for me or you're against me. There's no in-between. He came to make men and women choose. Choose you this day. Amen. Who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm releasing a prophetic utterance right now over men and women of God that it's time to rise up and make a choice in 2022. Amen. It's time to stand up and say, as for me and my household, we're spending the next year sold out, sanctified, and serving God 110%. Amen. Amen. I'm going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, therefore I'm going to walk with an intent to destroy everything that's not of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of good people going straight slap to hell because they believe the lie. Not because they're evil in their heart, but they've been caught up in and sided with darkness and don't even know it. And that doesn't come, they don't, people don't come out of darkness peacefully. I've been in 35 plus years of ministry and most times when I start preaching to people, the, the whole point of repentance is, my God, I've been wrong. Come on. Come on. You can't make somebody feel right coming to the cross. Come Are you on. listening to me? Come on. Oh, it's okay. You're, you're okay with God. No, you're not okay with God. You've got to fall on your knees and beg a holy God to have mercy on a filthy sinner. Your ways are not right with God. You're in transgression. You believe the lie. You believe the spirit of this age that Satan has built, and that needs to be destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. The first thing that needs to be destroyed is the belief that everybody's on the pathway to heaven. Come on. This, this false doctrine has even lulled the Christian church into believing a lie that, that, well, just let them in. We're all on the same journey. No, we're not. Come on. Some of them are straight on a journey straight to hell on a bobsled. The others are working out their salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Come on. Here's slide number two. Are you ready? 
well, how many of you ever heard that? Well, we're all just seekers. We're all we're searchers. No, we're not. Some people have become their own gods, meditating their belly button in the middle of a bunch of candles in their living room, and they think they're God. Come on. What do you think New Age is all about? Come on, bro. We're all gods. No, you're not. Come on. And every one of you are going to bow before a holy God to breathe life into your lungs. And you, you're going to find out your day of salvation has passed you, and you refuse to repent because of Satan building arrogance and pride in your heart. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, then how do I witness to somebody right here? 110% thus saith the Lord, no opinion, no emotions, no, no background, no history mixed with it, unless it's to lift this high, lift up the cross, lift up Jesus Christ. There is no other name given unto man under heaven whereby they can be saved except the name of Jesus. Amen. They're not right with God. The darkness has to be parted. And many times you've got to preach with enough force to get past the spirit of delusion. Amen. You can't preach with any more conviction that you believe every bit of this is 100% the will of God without compromise. Amen. As long as you're only believing part of this and half of it you don't want to bring out because you might ruffle somebody's feathers, you'll never effectively be an uncompromising preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because God backs his word, God exalts his word, God lifts up his word, because the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and his name was Jesus. Amen. And you're going to be 100 percent on Jesus' side. Amen. I'm here to work the works of God that sent me, not appease the darkness. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in that, there's two fundamental things that you've got to understand. Two fundamental actions that take place. Two fundamental ministries that are revealed in destroying the works of hell. Look at Luke chapter 19. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Destroying the works, the structure, the kingdom of Satan is, is, is worked out, demonstrated, and manifested in two primary ways. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Luke chapter 19, look at verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. That's point number one. How do you destroy the works of darkness, the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of hell on earth? Preach Jesus to the lost. Well, who's the lost? Everyone that doesn't come to the cross, the cross alone is still lost in their sins and lost and deceived in darkness. If you're going to destroy all the filth that Satan has raised up in this generation, all the, all the kingdom that he's established since the Garden of Eden, all this lying structure that is less, has it's been established from generation to generation. There's only one way to do that. Preach Jesus and win the lost. Pull the captives out of the kingdom of hell. Pull them out of the kingdom of the devil. Cause his ranks to be depleted by adding to the household of faith, adding to the army of God, adding to God's family. Deplete him by winning the lost to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's number one. And I want it to be known all over the internet. I want it to be known here at New Day Christian Center. I want it to be known all over Farmers Branch, Dallas, Fort Worth, the Metroplex, all over Texas. Anybody that ever comes across the name of T.C. Hudgens, this is a Jesus ministry. This is a cross-bearing ministry. This is a cross-lifting ministry. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. I am going to preach Jesus, proclaim Jesus, prophesy Jesus, lift Jesus, show people Jesus, and I'm never going to stop being a Jesus preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. It's the power of God that sets the captives free. Amen. I'm not going to get intellectual. I don't want to get relevant. I want to be a life that is glaringly different than everything around me. I was sent to this generation.
generation. I am not part of this generation. I am here to preach the light in the darkness. You're in the darkness. Come to the light. God will save you. Repent. Amen. This is a Jesus ministry. This is a Jesus ministry. This is not an intellectual ministry. Well, brethren, that, that old time preaching, that old time hallelujah, that, that, that's fanatical, that, that's foolishness. Yes, the gospel is foolishness to those that re are perishing. Amen. The gospel is foolishness to those locked up in the death of their carnal minds. Amen. So as long as they're telling you, well, you're just being foolish, they're saying, I'm still going to hell. Come on. What's the answer? Preach it to them more. Preach it to them more. Preach it to them more. Where? Well, until they die or you're sent to jail, one of the two. But never start contending for the faith of the lost. Never stop praying for the lost. Never stop preaching to the lost. Never stop raising Jesus up high. It is the power of God to their salvation. Amen. Glory to God. You want to destroy the kingdom of darkness? Be a preacher of righteousness. Be somebody that lifts up Jesus in every opportunity and every place. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Everything you're called to do, the wisdom of this age is going to cause foolish. They're going to call you foolish. They're going to think you're foolish. I strive to be a fool for Jesus. Amen. I strive to be a fool for Jesus. I strive to be the fool of Jesus. Amen. For the wisdom of this age is foolishness to God. And the wisdom of God is foolishness to man. Settle it right now to preach effectively to the lost and destroy the kingdom of darkness in your neighborhood, in your business place, in your city, in your town, in your state. You've got to be a fool that lifts up Jesus. You've got to be a fool that lifts up the cross. You've got to be a fool that lifts up your voice. Amen. Amen. And there is no other way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Set out right now. You'll never be effective for God worrying about what people think. Amen. You'll never be effective for God worrying about what people think. We got so-called Pentecostal word of faith, charismatic churches that never prophesy anymore, that never speak in tongues anymore, that never lay hands on the sick anymore, that never do any of that Holy Ghost stuff anymore because it might offend the wise that visit. And that's foolishness. For what's impossible with man, all things are impossible with God. In all things, nothing's impossible to those that believe. You're giving away your power. You're giving away your life. You're giving away the glory of God. Seeking wisdom that's foolishness in God's eyes. Come on. I am a Jesus preacher. This is a Jesus church. This is a Jesus ministry. And we lift up the cross. We don't hide it. We lift up the Holy Ghost. We don't hide it. We demonstrate the power of God. We don't hide it. We do what Jesus did. And we will not hide. Amen. Amen. I'm amazed at the Assembly of God. Four Square Church of God. That no longer talk in tongues in their main service. Oh, we say, we say that for midweek somewhere down in the basement. Shame on you. Amen. Amen. Shame on you. If you're ashamed of Jesus Christ, if you're ashamed of the Holy Ghost, then he will not back you up in your hour of need, and you'll be laying flat on your back saying, Jesus, where are you? I am far from your intervention because you denied me over and over and over again in your so-called wisdom. Come on. There's only one thing you can do then is roll over on your face, weep bitter tears of repentance out to the Lord, and empty up your heart out of the wisdom of the world, and get right with God and say, God, I'll be your fool, now help. And he'll move in immediately. Most of the people in the church are locked up in their sickness and disease because they're locked up in bitterness, unforgiveness, and a lack of repentance to God. Amen. God hasn't lost his power. God hasn't lost his ability. The Holy Ghost still wants to move among us. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, and you should live in resurrection power. Well, where is it? Don't accuse him. Check your heart and your ways. 
saith the Lord. The same old fashioned Pentecostal Jesus that healed the masses still heals today. Amen. And that brings us to point number two. Step number one, how am I going to destroy the works of darkness? Preach Jesus and get them out of the kingdom of darkness. Number two, go to Acts chapter 10. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Acts chapter 10, look at verse 38, very familiar scripture. We used to preach this all the time back in the day. Back in the antique day, back in the, in, in the old head day, back in the gray haired day, back in the power days. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. Healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Child of God, you want to find out if God is with you? Are you laying hands on the sick? Are you casting out devils? Come is on. he doing the works of Jesus? That's the demonstration that God's with us. And if God's not with us, then we need to repent and get God with us again. Amen. And honor God above the opinion of man. And honor God above the wisdom of this generation. And honor God above Amen. our relatives. And honor God above the way of the general Christian church. We need to get the Holy Ghost and the honor of God back in our church. Amen. Hallelujah. I wouldn't give you two cents to go to a service where you don't feel nothing, don't see nothing, and nothing happens and no one's changed. Come on. Every time Jesus was present, God was with him and healed all those that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. Get that settled in your heart right now. Look, God gave me this. Sometimes he heals, sometimes he don't. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. And how dare you blaspheme your God by even letting it come out of your mouth. Come on. Well, those days passed away. Only if Jesus passed away, sweetheart. Because he said, you go and the works that I did, you will do also. And lo, I will be with you always. Amen. The only thing that's died is the church and the faith in the word. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Every time I pray for someone, I believe they were healed. Amen. Every time I cast out devils, it's to get results. Well, my about the ones that didn't get healed. All I say is next. Well, brother, you can't do that. Well, how many people have you witnessed to that said no to Jesus? Do you stop witnessing? Then I'm not going to stop laying hands on the sick. Come on. Did everybody get healed in Jesus' day? No. It was based on their belief, on their faith in him and his obedience to his instructions. Nothing's changed. You're doing the obedience of God. He said, you go lay hands on him, I'll heal him. Don't you worry about whether it works or not. You're, you're hung up in your image before the opinion of man. I don't care if this looks foolish. Well, I don't believe all that laying on the hand stuff. I don't care if a lawyer says that to me, I'm going to rebuke him. I don't care if the governor says that to me, I'm going to rebuke him. I don't care if the biggest pastor in the city with all the PhDs, DDs, don't goes and do that stands up and says that. I'm going to rebuke it. For thus saith the Lord, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not God. This is God and this is what I obey and I obey it fully without hesitation and without apology. Hallelujah. Come on. Well, that's foolish. You're the only one worried about that. That's evidence you're still going straight to hell. The gospel preaching is foolishness to who? Those that are perishing. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Two primary ways you can destroy the works of hell is get people saved and get the shackles of sickness and disease off of them. Come on. Now, you all know that our precious sister Peggy went on to be with the Lord last week. Well, Pastor, what do you, how do you feel about it? I don't feel a thing about it. What happened in the, in the life of Jesus when John the Baptist was about to be beheaded? He's about to die. He came and said, ask Jesus, is he the one we look for? He's kind of wavering. I'm in prison. I'm about to die. I'm going to die next in the next couple of hours. 
Am I giving this life for the right one or have I missed God? John's disciples came to Jesus and said, are you the one or do we look for another? Jesus' answer was this. Listen, listen. You go tell John what you see. Don't give him a title. Don't give him a reputation. Don't give him rumors. Tell him what you saw. The blind see. The deaf hear. The lame walk. That answers that question. Come on. The manifestations of the power of the Holy Ghost answers the question. Are you in the right church or are you, are you not? Are you seeing Jesus through the works of the Holy Ghost? The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. That answers the question. Amen. Am I following God right? Are you laying hands on the sick? That answers the question. Well, my preacher preaches so eloquently. Are they getting healed? Do the blind see? Do the deaf hear? Are, are sicknesses coming out of bodies? Are lives being transformed from addiction to deliverance? Are prostitutes becoming prophetesses? Are pimps becoming preachers? That answers the question. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that vindicated Jesus by raising him from the dead and vindicates your ministry. Amen. Amen. Get out of the philosophy and mentality of this age and get into the gospel. I know Jesus is there if they're laying hands on the sick and casting out devils in the name of Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. Are the people doing the works of the Lord? Then you're in the will of God. You're destroying the kingdoms of darkness. You're unraveling this matrix of filth and decay. You're setting captives free in their spirits. You're setting captives free in their bodies. Every church I preach in until Jesus comes to get me. Or we all go home to glory together as a family. It's going to have that cross front and center. It's going to have a cross right before your very eyes. And it's going to be lifted and exalted. And he that died on it preached without compromise. And the works he did preached without apology. Amen. And the parting of the eastern sky. Because this is a Jesus ministry. I am a Jesus man. This is a Jesus church. And I'll never apologize. I'll never draw back. I'll never faint. I'll never stop. I'll preach it harder and harder and harder the darker it gets in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, this place is so dark we live in. And preach Jesus. Come on, brother. People are so filthy on the ground. Lay hands on them. You mean lay hands on sinners? You know most of these miracles were done to sinners. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, brother. You understand that? Yeah. See, now all you sanctified people line up, we're going to heal you. No, he was out among them, lay hands on the filthy sinners. And they knew that God had touched them. Yeah, amen. Not opinion, not rhetoric. Let's debate this and get your philosophy, my philosophy, and your opinion, and my opinion. No, this is Jesus, and that's why you see. That's why you hear. That's why you don't want to smoke dope anymore. That's why you don't want to sell your body anymore. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. The darker it gets, the brighter you better shine. The higher you better lift that cross, and the louder you better preach this word. That's how you destroy it. The kingdom of the devil. Amen. Win the lost. Do the works of Jesus. Set the physical, mental, psychological captives free. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you learned something today, Amen. give the Lord a big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer for your body today, then come forward. Make a line and we'll lay hands on the sick. If you need prayer of agreement for some spiritual battle you're in, make a line. I'll agree with you in prayer. All over the internet, right now, as the people are coming before God, and we're preparing to pray, we're going to pray for you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your hour of visitation. 
This is your moment for your eternity to change. New Day Christian Center, for you can live a new day God's way the rest of your life. If you want to be born again, stretch your hands out toward the computer screen, the television screen, your phone, wherever you're watching this on, and pray with Pastor GC. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe you are Lord. Please come into my heart and save me. I make you my Savior. I make you my Lord. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again. Now find a church. Buy a Bible. Call out to God. Serve God with all your heart. Never look back. Run the race for God's glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.